fans of Philadelphia, everyone, as the 76ers get ready to defend home court in the Eastern Conference. We're happy to have you with us for 2K Sports' midweek presentation of NBA Basketball. This is Kevin Harlan with Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg. We take a look at the Pistons. Look at this team, third from last in the East, just not the way they had hoped this season would play out. Well, Kevin, this portion of the schedule has really given this team some major headwinds. I mean, the level of competition they're facing, the quality of those teams, that's um, that's like 200 miles an hour headwind that you're dealing with, and that's hard to get out of. Yeah, it's taking a toll on them. You can see it. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they can't wait for the schedule to soften up a little bit and give them a break because this has just been too much for them to handle. And now the opening lineup for Detroit. Meeks and Singler at the two and three. Jonas Yarebko out there with Anthony Tallon. And it's Dragic into the point guard. Now here's Dragic. Six to shoot. And it's Noel with the rebound. 76ers with possession. Their last game, a win against Boston, looking to carry it into this one. I'll tell you what, the way they shot the ball that game, Kevin, it looked like a shoot around out there. <laughs> it sure did, and all the more impressive because they did it on the road. You're not supposed to be able to get that hot in an opponent's building. The Detroit Pistons, a proud franchise, of course, from 03 to 08, six consecutive trips to the Eastern Conference Finals, mm -hmm. and Clark in 2004, the NBA title. But the rebuild process has had its hiccups, Kevin, its speed bumps, if you will, some questionable free agent signings. There's talent there, but this team hasn't quite figured out how to come together. Now here's Carter Williams. Defense right on him. The layup off target. It's kind of a shocker. The defense was there, but it wasn't right in his face. Kind of out of character for him to miss those. Offensive rebound. For Philadelphia, they've gone 0-3 from the field to start the game. Here's Jackson. Can't get it to go. And the Pistons now going the other way. They come into this one following the loss to the Grizzlies. Well, loss or no loss, that was a fantastic game, Clark. They can be proud of the way they battled, at least. I suppose, but Steve, it still was a really heartbreaking loss. I mean, you hate to lose in overtime. No matter how hard you played, it still leaves you very empty and disappointed when you come up short. And you look at the Pistons, some great size and athleticism inside, but you know, they've lacked the high percentage outside shooting to space the floor offensively. Solid screen right there that freed him up for the jump shot. The 76ers have gone just one for five from the field to start the quarter. And he gets it to go. Jackson. And you know, for the Pistons last season, you look at the size and shot blocking ability and you thought that team would be tougher defensively but that wasn't really the case. I think it has to be attributed to mindset. Those young big athletic guys have to become much tougher mentally at the defensive end to be really successful. Here's Singler after the Sixers pick up two. Clock at four. There's Progic with the three. That one's rebounded by Embiid. And we're now one for five to start this game, so having trouble finding any offensive rhythm. Carter Williams kicks to Noel. Carter Williams sets a screen for Noel. Ball's knocked loose. Dishes it to Embiid. That's blocked. A second chance effort. Rebound, Detroit. Their last meeting was in Philadelphia, where they were unable to fight off the 76ers. And in that first matchup, they got absolutely manhandled on the boards, guys. So they're going to have to do a much better job tonight in the paint if they're going to win this game. The 76ers lead. Doris Burke has some information for us, Doris. I was able to talk with Brett Brown for a moment. Getting out in the open floor and exploiting his team's speed is an area of concentration for him. He said that as soon as we get a rebound, we want to get it to our guards, get off to the races, and we want this basically to come down to a track meet. Sounds like we should be in for a wild ride, guys. All right, Doris. That's good. That's some tenacity inside battling for the second chance points. Pistons trail by four. Here's Meeks. He had a 15-point outing in their last game against Memphis. And Dragic with the basket on the assist by Meeks. And that's why teams emphasize the use of screens and picks just to get you some open looks like that one. Here's Carter Williams. Drops it in from 11 feet. Carter Williams has got his first bucket of the night. Detroit with the ball. 
guys they're looking for a way to score here yeah they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far Rockets the pass to Meeks back to Dragic the feed to single shot clock at five kicks it to Dragic takes a three another miss by Dragic take a look at the rebound totals guys that's plus five now on the glass and Steve I don't think there's any question which team came out with more energy and enthusiasm now here's Jackson a 29 point game for him in the win against the Celtics in Boston did a great job picking the defense apart too it wasn't just his scoring credit for his passing in that game too I like the way he's not forcing anything taking advantage of what the defense is giving him. he's been a key contributor for them in this sport Meeks dishes to Dragic Here's Meeks, guarded by Jackson. And Meeks kicks to Singler. Thirteen feet away. And that one goes long. Well, Nerlens Noel listed at 6'10 at Kentucky. He measured at a quarter inch shy, seven feet tall in shoes at the NBA combo. I think it's pretty clear. His long-term future in the NBA is at the center position. Maybe could have tried for a more memorable dunk than that. And we know he's capable of those memorable dunks. But you know, they've got a nice lead. Don't take any chances. The simple one-hander is just fine. And he just used his height that time down low. That's going to be pretty hard to defend against. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. And Noel averaging over four blocks and two steals a game at Kentucky. I really think this guy has a chance to be a game changer defensively with his length and speed. Philadelphia leading by seven. Right side Jackson. Up top Carter Williams. That's good. And it's Jackson with the assist that time. Carter Williams has got his second bucket of the night. And for Noel, great athleticism, Steve, and a terrific motor. And Kevin, in some ways, having all of last year to work with the Sixers trainers and build his physical strength may be a positive. You know, his slender frame is really one of his weaknesses, so he needs to continue to add strength. And that one's good. Now here's Jackson. He's got nine. Pass to Noel. Back to Jackson. Right side Jackson. A shot by Carter Williams. Nobody around. And B, the pass to Covington. Carter Williams dishes to Covington. Carter Williams kicks to Jackson. And they double up Jackson. So here is Philadelphia. Six on the shot clock. Fires from 18. And again, it's Philadelphia. He's looking pretty confident out there. I mean, five of seven so far from the field. He's feeling. Pistons trail by eight. Outside Dragic. On the wing, single. Wide open. That one rolling around and rims out. In terms of rebounding, it's been a sensational opening quarter. I like sensational. That's a good word for it. Noel passes to Covington. He dishes it to Carter Williams. Now the pass to Covington. From beyond the arc, and Carter Williams gets it to go on the assist from Covington. And now an 11 point 76ers lead. Here's Meeks. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. There's the screen. Back to Dragic. Three pointer. Meeks can't hit. As a player, you always want to be able to answer back, but he just didn't have it in him that time. Carter Williams dishes to Embiid, and they double up Jackson to the left side wing. Back 
back to Carter Williams. No good with the triple. Pistons trail by 11. They really want to find that igniter here. Yeah, that's right. The, Kevin, the offense has basically been running in place. They got to get going. Philadelphia's gone two or five from three-point land here in the first quarter. You know, the Sixers have really undergone a complete reversal in recent years from a team with a very old-school, traditional front office to a team that's now focused on the science and analytics of winning basketball. And quite honestly, guys, we're seeing more and more teams embrace the uh, analytics. They've got a big lead here early, both defensively and offensively. They've been terrific right from the tip. And the Pistons decide to take their first timeout right here. Well, he may just be trying to get a break in the action to clear their heads. You know, a lot of their shots are limbing out. You wonder if their confidence isn't suffering at this point. I think that's a good time to call the timeout. If a team has a few fall the wrong way for them, just burn a timeout and let them forget about it. Regroup, talk about it, and refocus. Here's what Philadelphia is going with right now. Sims is checked in. And Bahamute comes in for Nerlens Noel. Richardson, he's checked in for Robert Covington. And it's Crawford in for Michael Carter Williams. And Augustine kicks to Buck. And it's good. Buck through contact. It's the shot. He'll go to the free throw line. And for the Sixers, their new stat driven decision making permeates the organization from ownership, Steve, to the front office all the way down to the coaching staff. Well, it's where the league seems to be going, Kevin. You know, teams are trying to think further ahead and see opportunities for strategic advantages. But, look, it's still a balance. You've got to have chemistry and coaching, and those numbers will come in play. But they can't be the be-all, end-all. Jackson against Augustine. Richardson up top. Right now averaging 11 points a game. Already, they find themselves down by a wide margin here, Kevin. They're giving up way too many second chance points. Caldwell Pope kicks to Augustine. Passes to Martin. Feeds it to Augustine. A 15 footer. And that one hits back iron. The 76ers leading by 12. Jackson passes to Richardson. Back to Jackson. Fires for three. Offensive rebound. Here's Sims. Great tee that time for Martin. Detroit's gone a meager 106 from three-point land since we got started tonight. And he floats in for the easy two. Credit the assist on that one. Another nice bucket down low. They've really been able to work the ball into the post effectively so far. Yeah, I think that could really set things up well the rest of the game. Pound the ball inside and then let your perimeter players play off your bigs. And he gets it to go. 13 points for the Cobra. Here's Caldwell Pope. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Now the dish to Augustine. He kicks to Caldwell Pope. Just five to shoot. Let's the free fly. Can hit. And Philadelphia the other way. Three on three. Here's Jackson. Makes good on the step back jumper. Jackson. Jackson's got 15. The more touches he gets, the more this lead will grow. He has just been unconscious this quarter. And here's Augustine. Makes it off the glass. Tolliver's got his second bucket tonight. The first quarter concludes in a double-digit lead on the scoreboard. 76ers ahead. They lead by 12. And back in a moment as we'll get underway with quarter number two. And welcome back. It's been all one-sided so far through the first quarter as our second quarter gets underway. And the 76ers have been rolling along, haven't they? And I thought the defense was key here for this club. They really tightened up and made it difficult on their opponent. How about the help on the drives and rotations? I mean, they've really been in sync as a unit. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. 
and Detroit looking at who they beat. DJ Augustine out there with Caldwell Pope. Then it's Martin, and there's Anthony Tolliver, and it's Butler in at the four spot. Philadelphia with the ball after the basket by Detroit. Crawford dishes to Jackson. Wants to get it to Crawford and does. The Sixers are certainly looking to build something special on the court. And to that end, they're planning to build a new 55,000 square foot practice facility close by at the Navy Yard. And right now, the Sixers practice about 11 miles away at a local college. That new practice facility, Steve, expected to open next summer, less than two miles away. Well, both from a competition standpoint and kind of player relations, I mean, it makes sense. Players want the best, and you get a top-of-the-line facility, makes it much easier to recruit in free agency. And that one goes in, two from the line that time. Boy, his free throw shooting, just another reason. He's such a good all-around player. Caldwell Pope kicks to Augustine. He feeds it to Caldwell Pope. Augustine with it, down to five on the shot clock. The Pistons need to get off a shot here. He gets it to fall. That makes it just a single-digit lead. Augustine's got five points now in the quarter. The 76ers leading by nine. Crawford passes to Richardson. On the wing, Jackson. Back to Richardson. Pass to Jackson. And he dunks it down. Boy, oh boy, to be young again. <laughs> Got me thinking back to my day. Oh, yeah, and right, it does make you nostalgic, doesn't it? <laughs> yep, reminds me a lot of myself in my younger days, too, guys. I, oh, wait, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> now here's Crawford. He had 10 points in the win against Boston. Back to Jackson. Right side, Jackson. And again, it's Philadelphia. He's created some good opportunities for himself and made the most of them. Pistons trail by 13. Here's Caldwell Pope. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. Butler against Mbamuta. And Butler gets it to go on the assist by Caldwell Pope. Boy, he made a nice little bounce pass there. We call that the pocket pass, and he did it well. And here in the second quarter of action with a hair under two and a half minutes played so far. Timeout called the 76ers. And as with any timeout at this part of the game, important to go over the strategies that are working and those that are needed in terms of adjustments. And, of course, the opportunity, guys, to get hydrated with Gatorade for coming back out of the floor. We've seen some good action so far, and there's, there's more of it to come. Yeah, this game has been physical. It's been fast. It's been high-paced. So... Anytime you're in a situation like this where it's really a hard-fought game, critical to keep yourself hydrated throughout. Catching up on the changes for Philadelphia. Noel's checked in for Amba Amuta. Thompson comes in for Jamal Crawford. And it's Carter Williams in for Jackson. Here's Sims. No good. Here's Dinwiddie. And there's the whistle. Foul hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. It's on Jason Richardson. And now we'll get a perspective here on the hustle game, how it's been going for Philadelphia. Fellas, the rebounding has been very strong. Excellent so far. Putbacks are very valuable, and they're getting some. And we're also seeing a lot of fast break hoops, so this team doing a nice job getting easy points. No good. Sixers head coach Brett Brown used to coach in the Australian League. Also the former head coach of the Australian national team. So a wealth of experience in international basketball. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Well, Kevin, no doubting Andre Drummond, an emerging star at the center position. As new coach Stan Van Gundy put it, 
I think we have two responsibilities to Andre Drummond that will help our team. Number one, do everything we possibly can to develop him as a player, and secondly, to put a system and personnel around him that will allow him to thrive. Kevin? Boys, it sounds like you're playing a pivotal role. Thank you. Yeah, Van Gundy perhaps envisioning him as Dwight Howard 2.0 in the middle. We'll see if, in fact, Drummond can live up to that. Brett Brown caught on with the San Antonio Spurs uh, for a year and a half working as a volunteer. Obviously learning and absorbing from the best. Yeah, he was four years as their director of player development, then an assistant coach for seven years alongside Mike Brown, Doc Vaughn, and Mike Budenholzer. All guys who have been head coaches or are currently head coaches, one of the many Spurs assistant coaches to become a head coach in the league. And here's Thompson following the three from Karan Butler. Richardson kicks to Carter Williams. Now Thompson. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Carter Williams can't get it to go. Dinwiddie passes to Yurepko. Here's Dinwiddie. Carter Williams covering. Here's Dinwiddie. 11 points last game. Sends with the rebound. Now they've been outstanding on the board. And it's a big reason why they've got a lead. Doing the dirty work down low. Yeah, and Clark, you know rebounding's a team effort. Everybody's boxing out. Everyone is accountable for doing a nice job collectively. And Thompson kicks to Richardson. Lock at six. Shot on the wing. Cannot hit. And Detroit the other way now. Now here is Augustine. He has five. Butler kicks to Yarebko. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Sims has got six rebounds here tonight. Tries from 10. And there's Richardson. That's good on the assist from Carter Williams. Richardson's got his second bucket of the game to go. Now a timeout called by Detroit. B, he's checked in for Philadelphia. Robert Covington comes in for Richardson. Singler, he's checked in for Detroit. Rogic comes in for DJ Augustine. Pistons trailed by 11. Here's Dinwiddie. Dishes it to Drogic. Dinwiddie passes to Singler. Shot clock at six. And he makes good on the layoff. Singler's got his first basket of the night. So it's Philadelphia now. They've led by as many as 14 points. Carter Williams dishes to Thompson. Embiid sets the pick for Carter Williams. And Thompson kicks to Carter Williams. Now the feed to Covington. The 76ers need to get off a shot, and he gets it to go. Six points for Joel Embiid. No way you can get back into the game if you continue to give up layups. It's Trogic with the drive. Goes back up, and it's rebounded by Covington. Covington's got three rebounds so far in the game. They've shown effort and aggression in the paint right from the tip. Their rebounding edge is impressive. And I'll tell you what, they've turned a lot of those rebounds into points at the other end. Carter Williams kicks to Covington. The call will go against Yurepko. That's his first foul. They tried to step in and cut him off, but just not quick enough. And we have the benefit of replay, but I think they got that one right, which is the case most times, even though fans don't think so. Here's Covington. He picked up 12 points in their last win against the Celtics in Boston. Six on the shot clock. Lays it in without an inch of room around him. And the 76ers lead by 13. Detroit's gotten both of their three-point attempts to go down here in the second quarter. Dragic left side. They set the pick. Kicks to Tolliver. Back to Dragic. Dinwiddie passes to Dragic. Five to shoot. 
It's stolen by Carter Williams. The finish carries it on. The power's off the break. Well, there you go. One team operating on all cylinders at either end steals fast break buckets, and the other team scrambling to find its game. Yeah, they've done a great job causing havoc and then taking advantage in, uh, in transition offensively. This is Dragic after the Sixers pick up two. Pass to Singler. Five on the clock. Detroit, no good that time either. The 76ers leading by 15. Singler, former second round pick out of Duke, played his first professional season overseas in Spain. And Stevie's played consistent minutes for the Pistons to begin his NBA career. Yeah, really a nice move on his part to get that development abroad because he came back a better player and he's quickly become a solid contributor at the NBA level. Here's Dinwiddie. Here's Tolliver. Another miss, and they desperately need a bucket. For Philadelphia, they've gotten seven of their 12 field goal attempts to drop here in the second quarter, up over 50%. And Singler is one of those value utility or Velcro guys, I like to call him. He kind of holds things together because of his excellent feel for the game. He's got a pretty decent touch from outside. He loves his size on the wing. He's not a bad defender at 6'8 either, so I like what he gives you. Jackson, he's checked in for Philadelphia. And Detroit with a change here, too. Meeks is checked in. No good on the second, so he hits one of two. Singler, not a big-time athlete, but he plays hard and uses his length well defensively. He's got a shot down a long and productive NBA career. You know, even from here, you can see that one pretty clearly. Yep, pretty obvious. And a good call by the official. This is his first chance at the line tonight. And for him, so far this season, he's shooting 83% from the free throw line. Those are outstanding numbers. Yeah, guys, I mean, he's been a very steady hand for them when it comes to his free throw shooting. That's good from Singler. You know, there are around 150 current NBA players with D-League experience. The developmental league, which started back in 2001 with eight teams, now has 18. The structure has changed a little bit over the years, but... I think you have to say that the D-League has become a big success for the NBA. He's perfect from the line this time. And, you know, this season, the Knicks, the Pistons, and the Magic acquiring single affiliation with D-League teams, and that seems to be a trend. The Knicks and Pistons moving them close to White Plains, New York, and Grand Rapids, Michigan, respectively. And looking to develop players within their system and get them back and forth quickly from their D-League assignments. Makes sense and looks to be moving towards more of the uh, Major League Baseball model. Now here's Dragic after the miss from Joel Embiid. Here's Meeks. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. Dragic dishes to Tolliver. Rebounded by Jackson. Jackson's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And of the 18 D-League teams, 15 are in single affiliation, Steve, with one NBA team. About half of those owned out by their parent ball club. Well, it's moving in that direction, Kevin, a place to develop talent and test out new methods. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see every NBA team with their own D-League affiliate for long. And the 76ers making a change here. And Baamute's checked in. And let's quickly check out the best young defenders, how they've been playing in the low post lately. Your rookie block leaders for the past month, Nerland's Noel, number one. Indeed. Well, strictly based on their defense around the bucket, it was a very productive month for both of these young guys. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. I mean, they're learning what it's going to take to play that NBA-style defense down low. It's understanding what your opponents are trying to do and then being physical with your intentions. Lock at six. Here's Meeks, guarded by Jackson. There's the bucket, good. 
And here is Carter Williams. 11 points in the game. He dishes it to Covington. Right side, Jackson. And there's the pass to Carter Williams. Back to Jackson. Can't cash in from close range. That's terrific defense right there to prevent from converting in close. Singular, no good. Oh, perfect opportunity to finish the break, and he blows it. Steve, you have to be able to finish off plays like that. It's a must. Well, offensively, he's taken a solid opening quarter and just built on it here in the second. Pistons trailed by 16. Rogic kicks to Meeks. Outside Dragic. Another three for Detroit. And that kind of defense is just not going to cut it. Guys, they have to get a hand in his face. Philadelphia's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Jackson passes to Covington. Trying to find Jackson. He's got it now. Just absolute domination in this one for Jackson. He's got 21 points and a steal. It's been a really complete performance for him today. No question. He's made an impact just about everywhere on the court. The 76ers have been successful on three of their four free throw attempts up to this point. Well, they've been a relatively poor free throw shooting team, about 72% as a unit. And, and guys, you know what? That's made things hard for them in a lot of their games. I mean, that inability to convert their chances at the free throw line. Jamal Crawford, he's checked in for Michael Carter-Williams. Cartier Martin, he's checked in for the Pistons. Contavious Caldwell Pope comes in for Goran Dragic. And so Jackson nails both of them. You know, they've changed their game here in the second. Getting a little bit more physical, playing with some toughness now. And you know, this lead is going to grow if they can continue to get to the free throw line. Martin, well-timed pass, and it goes straight to the bucket for the layup. They have repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys. And it's paid dividend. Yeah, it sure has, Clark. I mean, with as many points as they've gotten in the paint, they really haven't had to do much on the perimeter. Well, here we go again. An open path for the hoop, an easy two points. Where is the defense? Caldwell Pope kicks to Singler. Here's Meeks, guarded by Crawford. Here's the floater, and that one's good. Meeks got four points now in the quarter. Four seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Jackson dishes to Embiid. Back to Jackson. A good finish at the rack off the slick feet. And the 76ers lead by 15. Detroit's gotten it going from downtown in the second quarter. They're 3-3 three three on three-pointers. They set the pick. Caldwell Poe passes to Urepko. And the Pistons getting another bucket right there. Smart move with that mismatch he's got. You know what? That extra advantage sure pays off on the mid-range jump. And the basket good. And that assist earns him a little nod from his teammate after the basket. Here's Meeks. No good. And we've reached halftime in this one. 76ers lead by 15. And a chance now to send you over to Doris Burke standing by on the sideline. Doris? to come out with a lot of energy and just keep everybody involved, you know, mentally on the court. You know, everybody be prepared to go out there and prepare their role and, you know, win the ball game, whatever it takes. Karan, thanks for the time. Guys, back to you. All right, Doris, thank you, and stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime to get the third quarter underway. In the second half, first half wasn't even close, guys, and we'll see if there is a comeback on our hands or more of the same as we get the third quarter started. We're seeing a tremendous game here from the Cobra. I like that he didn't force anything in that first half. His decision-making was really flawless. That being the case, Steve, I think they want him to be more assertive in the second half. Look to take more shots. Be a little more shot-hungry, even the tough ones.
Pistons trail by 15. We've got Robert Covington. Embiid is out there with Nerlens Noel. Then it's Michael Carter-Williams, and it's Jackson in at the shooting guard. That's the group in the game for the 76ers. Here's Meeks. Six on the shot clock. Rogic kicks to Tolliver. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Embiid's got seven rebounds in the game. Well, Joel Embiid, born in Cameroon, the son of a professional handball player, only started playing basketball at the age of 16. He'd been playing soccer and volleyball, but I'll tell you, his development in the game has been rapid. That's good. Jackson! And, well, Detroit shooting around 41% on the night. Here's Meeks. Right through the D for the layup. Meeks got six. Really aggressive play, taking it to the rim against the big man. Tell you what, I love that fearless attitude. Carter Williams dishes to Embiid. Back to Carter Williams. Outside Jackson for the three. Covington shot is off. Boy, even though he missed, you can't give up that kind of a look very often. Yeah, they're lucky that they didn't get burned on that one. Meeks passes to Dragic. And Singler kicks to Yarebko. Just a little over 90 seconds gone in the third quarter. Can't hit from in close. It has not been an ideal start to the second half. They've missed three of their first four. Covington shot is off. Pistons trail by 15. Passes it to Meeks. To the middle. The kick out to Dragic. And we're just about two minutes into the second half now. To the inside. And the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good. He'll go to the line. The Pistons shooting the sixth attempt at the free throw line tonight. That's good from Yarebko. The 76ers leading by 12. Outside Jackson feeds it to Carter Williams. Back to Jackson. There's the dish to Carter Williams. Shot clock at six. And what was that about? Not a good shot right there. There's the pick. And it's Dragic off the drive. Terrific design on the pick play. And he lays it in. They got on this roll a while ago, and they just haven't looked back. And the 76ers call time here. Well, they were getting run ragged out there. Good time for a timeout. Maybe it was even too late. But this club has to regroup now. Boy, I tell you what, it wasn't pretty, and they definitely needed to take a minute to talk things over. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Well, over the break, I listened in on Stan Van Gundy's huddle. He urged his guys to get after it on the offensive glass, to follow every single shot, extend possessions, and cash in on some second-chance points. He also wanted them to know they should be working together to get their outside shooters open. He said, you know what place we have to run to get guys free. Now let's run them. The coach was not wasting any time at altering their strategy here in the second half. And Kevin, he's going to have to hope those changes take effect quickly. And as always, Doris, thank you. Well, now let's check out the rookies shooting the highest percentage over the last 10 games. A very confident group of young men right now. And you look at Jackson, so solid around the basket, currently third in the league. He's gone two for two at the line so far. And that one falls for Jackson. And the 76ers making a change here. Sims has checked in. So Jackson nails both of them. Third quarter here, and three minutes have come off the clock. Now a timeout called by Detroit. Nice game. Great performance by the Cobra. He's been attacking the rim with reckless abandon. They're searching for answers. 
Some way they got to figure out how to contain it. gone now in the third quarter. Drogic dishes to Meeks. Back to Drogic. A shot. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Noel's got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. Takes the 13-footer. Another miss by Philadelphia. And he continues to search for his rhythm. It's eluded him to this point. Here's Meeks. He's got six. Back to Dragic. Shoots off the screen. Here's your red goal. He kicks it to Meeks. Nice ball movement by Detroit. Outside Dragic. Six to shoot. Second chance shot. And it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it. He'll shoot one more at the free throw line. Just seems like they're finding an open lane to the hoop every time down. That's five buckets in a row for them in the paint. Yeah, on the flip side, Steve, the defenders have to show more fight on the interior. Jason Richardson is checked in for Philadelphia. Butler, he's checked in for Detroit. The Pistons have hit most of their free throws tonight, five of six. Well, pretty good numbers this season at the line for this club, right around 78% as a team. And the word is they challenge each other, guys. I mean, each and every one of them to improve their free throw shooting in the offseason. Held each other accountable in that area. And now you see the results individually and as a whole. The 76ers have been coming through at the charity street. They've made seven of their eight attempts. Two shots. He misses the free throw. He hits the second from the line. Pistons trail by 11. Outside Dragic. Butler on the way. And that's good. And it's Dragic with the assist. Dragic has got four assists now tonight. Oh, man, they needed a run to get back into this game, and they got it. And a good one, defensively and offensively. It's been a terrific stretch for him. Now, here's Richardson. Five points in the game. Jackson knocks down the three ball. Jackson's got seven points here in this quarter. All the buckets he's poured in today have put them in a terrific position heading into the stretch. Outside Dragic. Right wing. Yurepko kicks to Buck. Trying to answer back, but that three is off the mark. The 76ers leading by 12. Jackson passes to Sims. Back to Jackson, a free ball. Rebounded by Urebko. For Detroit, they've gone 5 of 12 from the field since the third quarter got underway. Bogic against Carter Williams. These are incredible rebounding numbers. I'm not sure if we've ever seen anything like this, Clark. Oh, that's for sure, Steve. I mean, a superhuman performance on the backboard. Well done. And they're able to recover. Richardson for three, and he gets it to go. Richardson's got eight points. And you can't leave him alone, especially from long range. Here's Meeks. He has six. Outside Dragic. Fires the three. That's good. He's got 15. Yeah, and that's his first three and a half. There may be more in store. 
for Philadelphia. They've gone a lackluster three of nine from the field since halftime. Goran Dragic, nicknamed Goji, grew up in Slovenia. His mom played hoops. His dad played soccer. Goji started out playing soccer, but when he hurt his leg, his mom said, no more of that pitch stuff. We're going to the round ball and the hardwood. So he went to basketball, and I'd have to say it's worked out pretty well. Good call by mom on that, too. A uh, different look here for Detroit. Dinwiddie has checked in for Jody Meeks. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Goran Dragic. And a moment to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from for the 76ers. You know, with their fast break operating so efficiently, I mean, you can see why they've gone with it throughout the game. Well, it seems to me that they're taking a lot of pride in their rebounding tonight, especially at the offense. Oh, my goodness. That is just ridiculous. Absolutely filthy. No, I don't come remember on. ever seeing a dunk like that in the game. I certainly can't remember the last time I saw it. Oh, man, that was just amazing. Augustine dishes to Butler. Here's your rep code. And even after two offensive rebounds, they just can't get the lid off. This has not at all been the kind of performance they've needed out of him. And Noel kicks to Carter Williams. 76ers moving the ball around. Richardson, no luck. Pistons trail by 16. Augustine with it. Five points in the game. Here's Dinwiddie. Again, the miss by the Pistons. Philadelphia's got a less than productive two of six from three point land in the second half. Now, Carter Williams, 11 points in the game. On the wing, Jackson releases. And again, it's Philadelphia. And after that last game, Park, I'm not surprised to see him so hot. He's got it rolling right now. Here's Dinwiddie. He feeds it to Augustine. That one bounces around and comes back out. Major defensive lapse right there. He's not a player you can leave open for a jump shot. You've got to stay attached to him. You're lucky he couldn't punish them for They've had assists now on their last three baskets. And it's not just their passing, but they're cutting their movement together as a unit that's led to that. Here's Dinwiddie. Pass to Butler. Six to shoot. With a floater, and he gets it to go. Butler's got four this quarter. He had to battle for that lay-in. Excellent, tough defense, but he found a way to get it down anyway. Outside Jackson. This is to Carter Williams. Back to Jackson. Noel sets a screen for Jackson. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. It's time to bring up the rookie leaderboard with the list of the top rebounders in the NBA since the All-Star. Nerland's Noel, number one. Third is Joel Embiid. I think the adjustment period is officially over for the half performance on the glass is any indication. Well, I think it's a very good indication, a strong indication that this pair can board with the big boys now. And he makes the first. And the 76ers with some changes. And Bahamute's checked in for Nerland's Noel. And it's Crawford in for Michael Carter Williams. Contavious Caldwell Pope. He's checked in for the Pistons. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. Pistons trail by 20. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, I mean, a cold stretch offensively. They desperately need a basket. Well, their pass it to Tolliver. The feed to Augustine. Kicks it to Tolliver. Pass to Dinwiddie. Out to the wing. Here is Caldwell Pope. That one wide left. The 76ers leading by 20. And let's now go to the sideline. We'll catch up here with Doris Burke. Doris, 
Well, guys, Brett Brown overseeing a major rebuild project as head coach of the Sixers. He said, you can get tricked by potential, but ultimately it gets down to integrity, character, competitiveness, and toughness. When you cut to the chase, those qualities mean more to me. Those non-negotiables keep me on track. They ground me. Kevin, fascinating stuff. So much of building a team and a program is defining that culture and the expectations. Thanks, Doris. And the defense paying instant dividends. Fast break basket. Yeah, that transition was immediate. Didn't waste a second getting out on the break. The 76ers have gone 7-15 from the field here in the third quarter. Crawford outside. And Baamute dishes to Crawford. And Abamute kicks to Jackson. Here's Crawford. Crawford missing again. Pistons trailed by 18. Here's the screen. Here's Dinwiddie. He's guarded by Abamute. And Caldwell Pope gets the basket. Caldwell Pope's got his first basket. I think they need to get much more disruptive defensively. They can't just keep allowing these easy baskets. I agree. They need more energy in the post, maybe some double teaming. They've got to get their defense in gear. Here's Jackson. The 76ers again can't hit it. Here's Augustine. Puts up the baby hook. And the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good. He'll go to the line. Embiid, he's checked in for Philadelphia. Robert Covington comes in for Richardson. And a switcher also for Detroit. Martin's checked in. The 76ers leading by 13. Outside Jackson. He dishes it to Crawford. The pass to Mbamuta. Tries again. And they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. I'll tell you what, does not matter what the score is. He's going to continue to work his tail off on the glass and make plays just like that. Anthony's checked in for Dinwiddie. For Philadelphia, they have shot 10 of 13 from the free throw line. One shot. Free throw. And Baamute. Good. There's 49 seconds left to play in the third. Butler passes to Caldwell Pope. Now here is Augustine. Five points in the game. Martin for three. Rebounded by Covington. Covington's got his fourth rebound in this one. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Great job. Take it right at the defense. I like the aggressiveness. Yeah, he left him no choice but to foul there. He shot two free throws in the game, made one and missed one. Two shots. Free throw drops for Covington. Singler, he's checked in for Detroit. That one misses. Pistons trail by 17. Caldwell Pope dishes to Butler. Passes it to Augustine. We've got 13 seconds left in the third quarter. A shot by Caldwell Pope. No good. He would have been lucky to knock that shot down. Yeah, that kind of shot will definitely get you the higher brow from the coach and maybe get you a seat on the bench, too. And he may be the guy to put this game even farther out of reach. Here's Augustine. No good. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. 76ers ahead, up 19.
and we'll have the start of the fourth quarter for you as soon as we get back from this short break. And here's Jackson on the floor for Detroit. Martin is out there with Kyle Singler. Then there's your Rebko. Then it's Contavious Caldwell Pope. And it's Dragic in at the point guard position. And Abamute kicks to Jackson. Four on the clock. Rebound by the Pistons. Outside Dragic. Feeds it to Caldwell Pope. Yurepko, the pass to Caldwell Pope. Here's the teardrop. Good! Caldwell Pope's got the fourth quarter started here with a bucket for the Pistons. The 76ers leading by 17. It's Jackson with the drive. There's the dish to Crawford. That's good, and it's Jackson with the assist that time. Six points for Crawford. Pistons shooting around 41% on the night. Outside Dragic. To the left side wing. Martin the screen. Now you're up. And Martin now top of the key. Shot. No good. Nice D from Crawford. Philadelphia shooting at 52% from the field. They're clicking. And B kicks to Amba Amute. Jackson against Singler. Out to the right wing. Here is Amba Amute. Rockets with some nice D. Pistons trailed by 19. Second minute off the clock now in the fourth. Here's Caldwell Pope. Dragic with it. He kicks to sink. Floats one, and he gets the bucket. And that's 17 points for Gordon Dragic. The 76ers leading by 17, and Philadelphia calls time here. Well, Goran Dragic is one of those interesting character studies. Off the court, he's very humble and quiet and laid back, but I'll tell you what, when he gets on the court, he plays with an aggression and a fire at both ends of the floor. Some changes for Philadelphia. Nerwin's Noel comes in for Mbamuta. And it's Carter Williams in for Jamal Crawford. Detroit also making some changes. Anthony Tolliver. He's checked in for Martin. And it's Jody Meeks in for Contavious Caldwell Pope. On the wing, Jackson. The three. And good on the basket. Book it. Jackson's got 45 points. You talk about Dragic. It's plays with a lot of heart, but Yeah, he does. He plays with emotion, and ferocity, and intensity. I mean, he gets into you defensively, applies pressure, and creates turnovers, and does the same thing by attacking offensively. Let's catch up with Doris from the sideline. Well, over that break, I listened in on Brett Brown's huddle. He'd like them to concentrate on their transition game to keep the tempo fast and put pressure on the defense in the open court. He also wanted them to know they should be working together to get their outside shooters open. He said, you know what plays we have to run to get guys free. Now let's run them. Gentlemen, some late game adjustments that could prove crucial in the game's closing moments. Kevin, over to you. All right, Doris, thank you very much. And Meeks kicks to Singler. Here's Meeks, guarded by Jackson. Fires the three. The shot misses. And Philadelphia the other way now. We played just over three and a half minutes now in the fourth quarter. Here's the three. Rebounded by Yurebko. Yurebko's got rebound number 11 for him here tonight. It's Trogic with the drive. Can't cash in from close range. Couldn't convert. A nice little two-man game there. And it wouldn't surprise me to see them go back to that the next trip. Now 
here's Carter Williams. Covington with the bucket. And the 76ers lead by 21. Another pass put right into the shooter's pocket, right in the shooting pocket for a terrific assist. They've done a lot of that today. Yeah, it's something we haven't seen much of at the other end of the floor, though. Here's Singler. That's him coming off an assist from Dragic. Dragic has got six assists in the game. Philadelphia leading by 19 points. Right side, Jackson. He feeds it to Embiid. And here's Dragic. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Sure could, Kev. I mean, too many empty trips. They need some points. Looked like he rushed that one, guys. The defense was out of position. He was wide open, just couldn't take advantage. Jackson is doubled. Embiid sets the pick for Carter Williams. Just five on the clock. Out to the wing. Shoots it. And the shot is long. He's one guy the defense is not afraid to leave open from that range, and for obvious reasons. It's Trogic with the drive, and that one's good. Trogic has got 11 points here in just the second half. Broke out the finger roll, guys. That was kind of a stylish finish. Carter Williams dishes to Noel. Down low, Carter Williams the pass to Noel. Jackson kicks to Carter Williams. Carter Williams with another miss. Well, he did have a three-pointer in the first half, but so far here in the second, he's come up empty. Singler outside. Pass to Yurepko. Outside, Meeks. That one goes. Count it. Talk about doing a Rip Van Winkle on defense. Come on, guys, wake up. Why are they leaving him open at the three-point line? Come on. Hunter Williams dishes to Noel. Goes up high for the two-handed dunk. No challenge from the defense there, but could have put that one through any way he wanted. And I love the choice there, partner. Going hard to the hoop for that throwdown. Well, yeah, that's invisible defense leading to a very visible finish. Here's Trogic. That's good. Trogic has got six here in this quarter. Here's Carter Williams. Noel sets a screen for Carter Williams. Dishes to Covington. Now Carter Williams. There's the pick. Shoots from 12. It's blocked. Here's Dragic. There's the feeds a single. Here is Tolliver. Dragic kicks to Singler. Back to Dragic. From deep. And Philadelphia grabs the miss. Jackson's got his sixth rebound on the night. Falls for Jackson. Well, it seems like they're having a lot of trouble at the line today, and it's just been that kind of a day. Jackson hits both of them. He's been to the line here more than in the first. I thought he was a bit tentative in that first, but I like the aggressiveness he's showing here now. Here's Meeks. They set the pick. As to Jurebko. Here's Tolliver.
first one drops. So he hits both of them. Well, as far as the league's big men go, he's one of the very best at the foul line. Carter Williams with it. Kicks it to Covington. He's looking for Noel and finds him. Banked in off the glass. Noel's got four this quarter. And things are going to come way too easy for him if he can get that deep post position. I agree with you, Steve. you got to deny him the ball down there as best you can. Meeks passes to Singler. There's the pass to Dragic. Rebound by the 76ers. Next step for them, the Knicks coming out here to play. That'll be the latter half of this two-game homestand. A lot of fans focused on that matchup for New York. Obvious foul. Yeah, he took a hit right there and earned those free throws. The free throw drops for Jackson. Jackson hits both of them. Now here's Dragic. Dishes it to Tolliver. It's rebounded by Carter Williams. The 76ers leading by 18. To the inside. Here's Embiid. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. That's now eight points for Joel Embiid. Took advantage of some shoddy defense there. They've got to at least get a finger on it. Now a timeout called by Detroit. Well, guys, maybe the most important play in the NBA that isn't really tracked at all is the screen. A good one can make a huge difference in creating a high percentage shot, but it's a play that so often goes overlooked. Pistons trail by 20. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've had a number of empty ones a long time without a basket. I got to find something. You're right. Meeks dishes to Yurebko. Pistons passing it around. Detroit, no good that time either. And screens are getting more attention with modern scouting. The old stats look at the outcome of a play, make or miss. It's like evaluating chess by only the checkmates. No, I agree. I mean, you start to dig deeper and get to other layers of how you analyze the numbers and how that affects how you game plan discover the tendencies of players and all of that you're doing in an effort to become more successful. This touch has disappeared on him this quarter. He just hasn't been able to get it going. It's stolen by Carter Williams. He dishes it to Embiid. And here's Jackson. Covington in the corner. Back to Jackson. Lock at six. A shot by Carter Williams. Nobody around. That's good. And it's Jackson with the assist that time. Jackson's got assist number seven for him tonight. Here's Meeks. Dragic's screen on Jackson. And Meeks kicks to Dragic. Shot to end this cold run, and it falls over the rim and in. Dragic has got 23. Well, guys, this was never really a contest, just total obliteration. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the 76ers. And they could do no wrong today, Steve. That's right. This was a 